Okay. We are recording. Um, so we, we are Monica, today yeah. to have Andrea Capelli for our uh, seminar. So he's a leading expert in uh, fractional quantum mole effect and uh, conformal field theory, topology, and insulator. And today he's going to talk about uh, self-dual conformal theory on the surface of topology and insulators. So please. Okay, uh, uh, so thank you for inviting me. And um, so what I'm going to talk is uh, a paper uh, work I did uh, one year ago and uh, is a bit of uh, uh, information on the, there is a, some sound, there is an echo or no? Do you have an echo? No, okay. So, um, so just a second. So what is, what is it? Well, we are discussing topological state of matter. We will see that um, topological uh, states uh, are um, uh, cases in which we can use uh, field theory, effective field theory. And uh, this effective field theory is kind of special because uh, it's in general a gauge theory, actually a topological gauge theory. So it has its own peculiarities. And uh, so the whole we, I will start talking about the whole effect because uh, uh, this is the best understood since already something like, uh, I would say more than 20 years. And uh, then we will talk about the topological insulators, which are more recent, and also they are in one more dimension. They are in three plus one dimensions. And uh, and then uh, and then I will discuss uh, this little result, which is a property of uh, the the effective theory of topological insulators. And uh, my emphasis will be on the uh, bosonization. So the fact that you can describe. Uh, fermions with the bosonic uh, fields. And in particular, it turns out that the bosonic description is better because it also describes uh, interacting fermions, okay? So this subject is well understood in one plus one dimension uh, because in one plus one dimension, we have a lot of results. We have a conformal field theory that uh, allows you to uh, solve completely the the theory, the spectrum, uh, correlation function, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, however, we will see that uh, the topological states of matter provide a, a setting in which you can expect that uh, uh, bosonization should be also present. So if you don't believe in bosonization, say, oh, no, no, uh, fermions and boson are uh, are, the, are, are similar in, in one person dimension because there is no spin, uh, there is no rotation group, uh, it's, so it's just a line, a space is just a line, and then it's special. Well, uh, well, wait and see, because in fact, uh, it turns out that uh, there are good, uh, expect, uh, good uh, expectations that uh, maybe bosonization can be achieved also in another dimension. So let me start with a review of uh, topological state of matter. And uh, in particular of the quantum effect. So I guess you see my point, right? And uh, so what is the topological state of matter? Well, is uh, suppose you have a gap phase at low energy and you say, oh, what's happening at the energy below the gap? So you have a gap, a gap phase and, and you say, what happening uh, energy below the gap? Well, in normal system, nothing, because uh, there is just the ground state. You, you're not exciting any, any, any local fluctuation, nothing, okay? Instead, in, in uh, topological, state, no, uh, topological states, you have something that takes place at energy below the gap. And these are kind of global effects, global degrees of freedom or global effects. So in general, you have a, uh, uh, massless states which live at the boundary of the system. And because they are massless, then they exist at any energy below the gap. And uh, so in general, you consider that the bulk is frozen, but uh, there are also other effects like uh, ground state degeneracies and exchange phases when you, you drag one excitation around the other. 
and other effects. So these effects are not uh, uh, described by ordinary uh, approach of uh, Landau-Ginsburg and spontaneous symmetry breaking. These are different kinds of uh, of uh, of states. So no no symmetry breaking, no Higgs effect is something that has to do with uh, genuine gauge theories. Then there is a major difference between uh, a system which breaks a time reversal, like a quantum effect, and, to, uh, and some that are don't break time reversal. And also, the very important thing is that uh, uh, the quantum effect has been known for over 30 years. It was considered as a, a very interesting subject, but kind of peculiar. Peculiar because it takes place in very low end. Uh, temperature and very high magnetic fields. However, it turns out that uh, in the last 15 years, we understood that uh, these topological states are much more. And uh, there, are, they have, uh, there, are, there are many have been discovered. Uh, there is a classification in 10 classes, which dates uh, more or less around 2010. 10 classes in any dimension. And, uh, and they, they have other fancy names like topological superconductor, chain insulators, quantum anomalous on effect. And now there are also investigations in chemistry by which they argue that uh, uh, up to 20% of all the compounds could be topological. I mean, could be in principle. Then in practice, it depends on the size of the gap and size of. Uh, uh, disorder and so on and so forth. But uh, is in this uh, topological states of matter are in fact are not so peculiar, but more uh, more common. Okay, so so the first observation of topological oscillators is uh, around 2008, as I show. Okay, so let's start with the best understood, which is always uh, uh, a good point uh, to begin because uh, it it has all the features that i want to emphasize okay so as you know uh, when you have a landau levens in the magnetic field uh, you know that uh, there is a gap the there is, they have these uh, massive degenerate levels uh, for example if you have a a disk geometry then you have uh, uh, angular momentum states uh, which are the orbits of the electrons in the magnetic field. And uh, they are characterized by, for example, if you put a, a radial graph, you have that these orbits are, uh, are, uh, uh, are have a value of, of uh, radius square proportional to angular momentum. So, and they are degenerate, okay? And then this is the first lambda level. Then the second lambda level is not relevant because the difference there is a gap between the levels, which is of order of magnetic field, and is much bigger than the temperature in, um, in which the system is, is located. So, so in this case, uh, the, there is a gap in the bulk, but there are, it's very easy to understand that there are uh, uh, excitations, massive excitations at the surface, because at the surface you will have a, some sort of uh, confining potential that uh, breaks the degeneracy. And so this uh, surface, this uh, su 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 I mean the boundary of the disk, the edge of the disk is became, becoming like a Fermi surface. So you can linearize the dispersion relation uh, at the Fermi surface. And then you get uh, uh, the original fermion becomes, become, it is massless, acquire a, a linear dispersion relation, a relativistic dispersion relation like this. Okay, and uh, and then uh, it's, at this point, this fermion is on the on the boundary, so it's a one plus one dimensional fermion. Okay, and so and so these are, these are the excitation at low energy in the system. So being relativistic, I can do a relativistic quantum field theory description. Okay, so in the simplest case, this is just a free fermion, free fermion in one plus one dimension. Okay, you just take the fermion, the original electron, which depends on both on the radius and, and, uh, and, uh, and theta and the azimuthal variable, and then you just fix the radius at, uh, at the boundary, and then you get the one dimensional fermion. Okay, and for uh, when you fill completely the, the Landau level, then is, this is just a, a, a simple non interactive fermion. Okay. 
And then, then the interesting thing is that uh, there, are, there is a gap also when uh, the, the filling in the bulk is not one, but let's say one third. In this case, the, the, the system is interacting. So the, the gap is due to uh, interaction among the electrons in the bulk. And so also on the boundary, the fermion should be interacting. At this point, uh, the, the fermion description is not useful because interacting fermion, but fortunately, there is a, a bosonization and the fact that, that you can uh, describe interacting fermions in one plus one dimension in terms of uh, boson and in particular in terms of conformal field theory and sometimes this interacting uh, this uh, conformal theory is called Lattinger liquid or a compatified boson okay and maybe you, you know something about this and uh, and then uh, uh, the boson description is superior because it allows you to describe also non-trivial cases in which uh, you have, uh, for example, fractional charge and uh, other fun effects. Okay, so let let me discuss how this uh, uh, effective description, bosonic effective description, can be deduced from first principle. Okay, so as you know, in effective field theory, what you have to do is you have to do an educated guess. So you start by saying, I have, a, I have a, some kind of uh, degrees of freedom at low energy. I know what are their symmetries. Uh, I know what is the dimensionality. And then I start to write the simplest uh, Lagrangian I can have compatible with the, with the property of degrees of freedom and the symmetry of the system, OK? And, in, and this is an expansion in uh, powers of the field and also powers of the derivative of the fields because you start this as a dimensional expansion, low energy expansion. So you start to write the simplest terms. So what is the simplest expression you can write for the whole effect? Well, it is this Chen Simon effective theory. So this is uh, the, the induced action. So that is the, the, the action that uh, tells you what is the response of the system when you put the system in a certain background, the classical background, a new, the, the ordinary gauge field. Okay, so what, what could be the simplest expression? Well, the simplest expression is the Chen Simon term because uh, it exists in three dimensions, in two plus one dimension, and it is less uh, it, it is uh, it has a dimension lower than uh, what you might think uh, that is the young mix term okay that's just one derivative not two derivatives we know that this term breaks uh, time reversal and parity but that's okay because uh, in the quantum mole effect we have a magnetic field and so these symmetries are broken okay so that's the simplest expression I can write and uh, if you take the derivative with respect to a standard field, you, you get induced current, which has, a, which has a density part and the current part. And you see that the result is correct. So that, uh, in fact, the relation between magnetic field and density is what you expect uh, in the system. And nu is called the field infraction. So in a field level is one, and uh, one third is you feel on average, one uh, state uh, out of three, okay? And also you see that the current is given, this expression is given by uh, the electric field and it is orthogonal. So this is the expression of the whole current and this nu, uh, nu divided by two pi is the whole conductivity, okay? So, so we, we understand that this term is what you need uh, at very low energy to describe the old current. So the old current is uh, this. This, this, this uh, tells you that uh, the the old current is a global effect. It does not has nothing to do with the fluctuations because this is a, this theory has no local degrees of freedom, propagating degrees of freedom because you see that just one derivative. And uh, the equation of motion of this of this action is just uh, f equal to zero. So there is no photon associated to this action. Okay. Okay. So that's an indication that we are on the right track. Okay. 
And then you'll say, okay, but this is the induced action. So what is somehow the real effective action? The one in somehow in which I introduce some uh, local degrees of freedom to describe uh, matter. Well, you have to introduce an additional uh, gauge field, which is so-called hydrodynamic gauge field, which is, is in fact is a, is a matter, is a, is a matter fluctuation. So it's a dual of, of the current, and this current describes a, a matter fluctuation, a small fluctuation of, of the system, okay? So this, this is somehow is the corresponding quantity of uh, landau gisbu field, okay, phi. So, so it's not an order parameter. We don't have a scalar field, we have a gauge field, but it describes uh, some collective behavior of the matter. And what would be the action for this little a field? Well, it's again, as shown here, is again the Chen theory. Why is that? Because if I write this action for the little a and I put a, a, a minimal coupling current times a, which is, which is written in this form, okay, and you integrate out the little a field, then you get back the induced action, okay? So this is the low energy uh, effective theory for, uh, for, the, for the whole effect. Of course, so then you discover that this, uh, if you put sources for this little a, you, they obey some, uh, some, they have some Arnold bond phases, which what you, you know, you expect because the so-called anion, okay? Uh, is some phases, uh, some excitation, which have non-trivial Arnold bond phase. Then if you quantize this quantity on a compact uh, surface, then you discover that you have uh, the degenerates. So the ground state is in fact sensible to the global property of the space. And on a compact space, you get a non-trivial degeneracy, final degeneracy, which is given by K, that when as, uh, called this topological order to distinguish from ordinary order, okay? So this is the learning effective theory. But in fact, this uh, theory is not complete. It's not complete because uh, we are not discussed yet uh, the excitation at the boundary. So how to deduce the, the excitation at the boundary? Well, the first observation is that uh, on, a, on, a, on a space with a, the with a boundary, like the disk, uh, the, the, the chain simon theory is not gauge invariant, okay? So this is a known fact about chain simon theory that uh, when you, when you vary A as a gauge transformation, you get a non-zero term, which vanis vanishes only if, you, if, uh, if uh, it's a total derivative, it vanishes only if the, the, the space is compact, but, uh, but uh, the space is not compact. So you have to add some other degrees of freedom that compensates. Because after all, we know that on the boundary there are the, there are degrees of freedom. There are these uh, edge excitations. And also you expect that there is a, a current conservation because uh, I mean, uh, this, this, this current from the bulk can flow to the boundary and should be conserved everywhere, okay? Okay, and so this is uh, the term you, 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 you write. And uh, one way to understand this, this term is simply say, okay, uh, the gauge field, on the boundary, I can write as a as a as a pure gauge term because uh, because we are in one dimension and actually there is no real uh, gauge field in one dimension, and so I replace on the boundary I replace a with d phi, okay, and so this suggests uh, then then you get a total derivative and then this is the term that you get on the boundary, okay. So, but then. Sorry, but then and yeah. the, you've yeah. written that a naught equals zero, which suggests that there is a slightly more general form of this. No, this because it's just a, st a static, static, a static hypothesis. What if you, if you make it non-static? What, 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 what it's you just a matter of uh, just a change of variable. It doesn't it doesn't it doesn't bring any 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 anything more. I, 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 
So, so the A not equals zero is what's confusing me. I don't. A not A not is a Lagrange multiplier. Okay. So, so I can put it to zero for the time being. Okay. Okay. And uh, if you don't put, if you put different from zero, you you don't uh, get more than what I'm just going to say. Okay. And I put the zero one to zero be just to show you that this is just a synthetic term. So it's like a PQ dot, okay? So there is no Hamiltonian, but there is, I mean, no wonder because uh, this is a topological theory. There is no Hamiltonian in the bulk. And when you restrict the action to the boundary, okay? There is no Hamiltonian either, okay? Then you have to add an Hamiltonian because you know from physics that you have a potential at the boundary as I was telling you before. And so you have to, uh, you, you have something that uh, propagates on the, on the boundary. And so you have to put as an additional input because this is, a, this is an educated, educated guess. So once in a while you have to include an additional input if you know that there is something more, okay. You cannot, so one way to resolve the problem would be to say, okay, I put everything equal to zero at the boundary, just a, I put the entire gauge field zero equal to boundary, then it is gauge invariant uh, by, by, the, by definition. But it's not physical because at the, at the boundary there are degrees of freedom. They are propagating degrees of freedom. So I have to add degrees of freedom at the boundary and they also, they are not topological. They do have an Hamiltonian, okay? And so the simplest expression you can add is this quadratic Hamiltonian in the, in the current. This is the current on the, on the longitudinal uh, direction, x is uh, is the is this variable or longitudinal variable r times theta, okay? And so and so I get I get this Hamiltonian, and you see that the equation of motion for this Hamiltonian tells me that uh, the waves are chiral, so they propagate in one direction only, which is okay, because you have a magnetic field, okay? So, this, so in this way, we deduce the bosonic description of the edge, okay? And what is it? Well, this is called so-called chiral boson because it's only half of a boson uh, because there are no waves propagating in the other direction. I mean, uh, X minus VT, okay? And from the point of view of conformal field theory, this is a conformal field theory with central charge equal to one and zero because the other part, the antichiral part is absent, okay? So this is a theory you can solve uh, very easily. It's, uh, and, uh, it's canonical quantization. What you have to know is that uh, the, the field is compact because after all, the phi was, uh, was a gauge field. So it's an element of U1. So the phi, phi is, is a compact field. And because it is compact, you have solitonic solution. And this solitonic solution are uh, what uh, are, are counter, counterpart of anion in the bulk. So the anion is a localized excitation in the bulk. Then it corresponds to a soliton excitation on the boundary, on the boundary theory. There is a so-called boundary bulk boundary correspondent, the meaning that uh, most of the property of the bulk for long range effect, for low energy effect, can be captured in the effective theory at the edge, okay? At the low energy, low energy, okay? So in the bulk, you have a sort of static anion, and in the boundary, you have this uh, uh, soliton excitation, which have a fractional, in general, have a fractional charge, and depending on this K, which is the denominator of the filling fraction, and uh, they are described by well-known uh, vertex operators, which are exponential of the field, okay? In particular, for K equal to one, you recover the fermion. And so this is a bosonization in one plus one dimension. So it's, this, this result was very well-known before, but you get here, somehow out of, uh, out, of, uh, out of the physical setting of the problem, okay? And as I was telling you before, uh, the interesting property of the boson description is that, that it can describe uh, interacting fermions because, because when you have this anionic excitation, 
they are, they are uh, this, they, they correspond to a non trivial non trivial theory non, -tri non trivial correlators and uh, non trivial effects okay so it's not a free theory and so in this result there are uh, a number of uh, lucky features that uh, that the, the, the one plus one theory we are discussing it is well understood. Uh, conformal field theory is well understood. Uh, uh, all the features are known. Uh, they have been developed by, you know, for example, in string theory, in, in statistical mechanics, uh, in many, 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 many contexts. Okay, so we, but it's interesting to see that this comes from uh, this uh, bosonic description from uh, from first principle. So. To summarize, summarize there's just, just one one yes. question with regard to, to your previous answer. You are generalizing away from uh, integer k. Yes, yes. And, and I said because because okay. uh, the effective action here, uh, starting point was this effective action which has this k parameter, okay. And it you know it fits the value of the field fraction. That I see in experiment, one third, one fifth. Okay. Yes. And so, so it doesn't make a difference from from in this setting, integer and fractional. Integer and fractional. And uh, and when you go to the to the to the boundary theory, there is this lucky feature that. Uh, but the bosonic description yeah. also bosonic. is the same or see very similar when k is one or bigger than one. Can I make a remark? Yes, please. Can I make a remark? Um, at least from the work we have done long ago, the problem of the edge thing, Kasburi algebra you're writing, comes purely from the fact that the constraint equation in the bulk is dA equal to zero, weakly yes. zero. But that is not so. You have, you have to write it in terms of test functions and smear it, and it is well defined as a constraint only for test functions vanishing at the boundary. Yeah. So this is very much like the ADM uh, ADM formula for in uh, GR. Okay, so you have a constraint on the test functions. However, the charge comes from test functions. We do not vanish at the boundary. So if you write the charges, you immediately get the Kasmodi algebra. With the central term that you're writing down. No further activity is required, no scalar field is required, you get it immediately. Now, if you want to cancel this or have something at the boundary also, you can add the term d5 with j at the boundary. This is a dangerous question. So there is an a0 also, d5 with j will exactly cancel the uh, extra thing, uh, boundary, the charge term that is coming from the bulk. So this gives you the bulk. Uh, what they call uh, bulk edge correspondence, the current flowing from the bulk to the boundary and back. So the yes. bulk edge correspondence that you immediately get. So in this equation, this, this term you're writing, dx phi phi dot does not appear. Okay, This is d phi wedge d phi. This is a two form d phi wedge d phi. But yes. in this formulation, it doesn't appear. It's simply not required. And if you want, you can add a kinetic energy term for phi. Um, and you'll have it, the small a also doesn't appear. But this is Venn's activity, but that is not, in my opinion, not the canonical activity. For example, in quantum gravity, okay? uh, ADM mass or what happens in elsewhere. Okay? So this is a remark. Uh, okay, you can continue, but um, I was uh, always skeptical of Venn, okay? this activity. This, what is this small eye he's writing? I don't know. Okay, okay you can continue. No, no, sorry. Sorry, I made this remark. But, made this remark. but, but Bal, just no, no, the, the mark is fine. But um, he has removed the original term Simons and replaced it by A, which we integrated out. Re it, it's just a rewriting of the original term no, Simons. No, he has written this. No, he has written, there's a capital A also here. He there's a capital A also here. Oh, there's a capital A, but the capital A. When little, when little a is integrated out, you get back to the no. term Simon. So, uh, uh, so I am I'm not writing like functional so, because, I am, I'm because when you write functional like this, one has to be very careful about boundary. In these problems, one has to be wary of boundary condition. What is the class of fields on which you are integrating? Even formally, you don't know. So let us do a canonical approach. 
Uh, there is an echo. That's my, that's okay. probably my one. All right. In the, my, so you write the, just write down the churn segments with two plus one. Okay, as he did. That problem already has features similar to what happens in the, uh, uh, the spy group of uh, Ashtaker, for example. Okay? Because the constraints you are writing down has a derivative, DA. So one has to smear it with test functions, but um, the, the test function class, even classically, if you want differentiability of the constraints, is are vanishing at the boundary. Then you can write it as d lambda with j. So that is the Gaussler constraint. But you can extend this to lambdas which do not vanish at the boundary. That is not a constraint. So you take that and you take the commutator and you get this Casimori algebra at the, at the boundary right away. Okay? No further activity is required. Now, if you want to cancel the anomaly also for gauge transformation, what people call large gauge transformations, okay? if you want to cancel it, you can add D5 with J at the boundary and cancel it. And if you want kinetic energy, you can add it. But this term you, that Ben is writing never appears in this game. I, I, he just he is very popular with condensed matter, but so far as I know, he is not particularly commensurate with what people in GR do or other places. That's a remark. It's my opinion. Okay, we can return to it at the end. Yeah. I think that's the best okay. solution. And, and Andre may have some comment, but uh, yeah. he wants to make right. this point. But let's well, I think, I think the, the way to connect the bulk boundary that uh, Balachandra was saying is, uh, is another way to get the same result. Uh, uh, if, you, if, you are, if you are interested in just uh, the property of the charge, and so the current algebra, then uh, there is no need of the Hamiltonian because just the property of charge is uh, is uh, is not dynamics. If you want then to add uh, in Hamiltonian, then you then you you have to construct uh, you construct uh, also Virasoro, which is a way to introduce a stress tensor and then an energy. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, there is no. It's automatic because once you have a in conformal field theory, once you have a current algebra, you also have a, a Virasoro algebra, and so it's all. Uh, I mean, there aren't there aren't many there aren't many options. There's just one option, and you can derive in different ways, but uh, the result is the same. And uh, what I didn't speak uh, is that anomaly cancellation, so called uh, anomaly in flow that. Uh, in fact, the th this theory is anomalous, and the, but the anomaly is canceled by the, the current in the bulk. So there is a cancellation anomaly between bulk and boundary, which is uh, required because after all, the, the entire system is non-relativistic, so it's not anomalous. And this is another way to characterize the property of the, the relation between bulk and, and boundary. Anyhow, uh, so summarizing what uh, I wanted to say is that uh, in quantum mole effect, uh, there is a bulk uh, with a gap and uh, massless, state, massless edge states. And uh, we have seen that uh, uh, the effective theory can describe both non-interacting and uh, equal to one and interacting fractional uh, feeling and uh, that uh, we have an effective theory and effective theory is uh, uh, also has as many uh, practical uh, consequences for example uh, if you you can compute the responses of a system at very low energies so if you take the whole effect you do small uh, experiment involving small energies then uh, the, the, the effective theory gives you uh, the exact results. So you have universality in the response of the system, the current uh, interaction phases uh, and other properties, okay? This, this is very well understood, very much studied over 30 years, okay? Okay, or maybe 25 years. So now we're going to speak about uh, other uh, topology states, in particular, the topology of And in this case, 
Uh, again, there is a difference between uh, interacting and non-interacting fermions. For non-interacting fermions, there is a way to characterize the topological states in terms of bands, of electron bands. And this gives rise to the Stanford classification, I will see. Uh, in the case of interacting fermions, the, the band system is not useful. And then one has to resort again to an effective fit theory which can incorporate all, uh, both the interacting and non-interacting fermions. And this effectively will be built using the same tricks we have been discussing before. So there will be a topological theory in the bulk and there will be massless uh, excitation on, on the boundary. So let's see how this comes in, in a little by little, okay? So first of all, what is this uh, classification in terms of uh, Band, uh, band Hamiltonian, band system. Well, what is a band system? Well, it's a quadratic, quadratic Hamiltonian in terms of fermionic creation and annihilation operators. We are here, here we are in momentum space, okay? So this can be short, short, uh, I mean, uh, hopping, hopping term, okay? But it can be anything. So the, the, the main point here was that in fact, this, these are matrices, okay? These matrices in fact uh, are characterizing classes which only depends on very general property like uh, charge conjugation and time reversal symmetry, which can be either uh, absent, so this is zero absent, or can be uh, respected, but the square is plus or minus one. Okay, so altogether this, this makes three possibilities for C square, for C and three possibilities for T, for T, so that makes nine classes. But then there is a case which count twice, so in to total there are 10 classes. And this uh, classification of matrices in terms of uh, time reversal and charge symmetry is in fact not new, is a, is a is extension of the uh, study of random system by Altland and Zimbauer. Okay, so sorry, may I ask? C and T uh, C is a unitary operator, no? Yes. And C is anti. How can it be zero? Square of C. Okay, how can it be zero? No, no, it's not zero. Sorry, this is uh, abuse. Abuse of notation. Zero stands for is not there. It's broken. Oh, and uh, it's, 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 a, it's a mistake of mine. It's a abuse okay. of notation because it comes with the top table, okay? Okay, but, but uh, T squared is for fermions is or, yeah, I'm sorry. always I'm sorry. minus one, not plus one. But T squared for fermions is, is T squared is minus one to the power of 2J, is anti linear. And for fermions, it is always. It is always minus one to the power of two G. Yeah, it depends on this. Well, more precisely, it is minus one to the S. So if S yeah. is one uh, uh, to the two S. So if S is is even, can be one. Uh, but here it is fermion, no? Yeah, but uh, yeah. it's more complicated than this. <laughs> Anyhow, so this is a this is a situation. You see, this stands for T square. Okay, so. You can have zero, zero, and in, in this case, if both are zero, then this additional object, which is called a sort of parity symmetry, which is the product of two, can be uh, broken or non broken. And in this other case, uh, you see, can, you can have plus and minus or absent. So zero stands for absent, okay? Very sorry for this uh, abuse of notation, okay? And so, for example, you see, if one of the two is absent, then S, which is the pro product, is, is, is absent, so broken. If this is broke, one of the two is broken, the product is broken, okay? And if both are, uh, are, are unbroken, then you get is S exists, okay? So, so, so basically, uh, so this is a result by Kitaev and uh, Ludwig and other. And it's a remarkable, uh, remarkable result. So you see in the top, you have a space dimension. Of course, you don't uh, expect a physical system and dimension bigger than three, but this was shown that was, a, this table was shown to, to see that there is a periodicity eight in this. 
And uh, okay, we could say many things about this uh, this table, but uh, what I wanted to point out is that we we have discussed integer uh, Le quantum effect, which is here, dimension two, and uh, we have a z factor, a z uh, that is, a, is the states are characterized by an integer, and then we are going to discuss topological insulators in three dimension, three space dimension. In fact, where the uh, index characterized in the class is Z2. So either present, present or absent, okay? So now the question is, this, this is very good and extremely nice, but it's true for non-interacting fermions. So the question is, does it extend to interacting fermions? Eh, the, the answer is sometimes yes, sometimes no. Okay, so 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 that this uh, this study is incomplete because uh, there are cases in which the fermion interaction cannot be neglected, and so and so what? How do we uh, proceed? Well, uh, we proceed with effective theory. So we try to characterize the massless states which exist at the boundary in terms of effective theories. So how do we? construct an effective theories. Well, uh, first of all, one has to understand where these massless uh, excitation are coming from and why they are robust. Uh, they are robust because, uh, because in fact, uh, you have uh, in the spectrum of bands in this topological states, you have a band crossing. So you have levels that they go from the valence band to the uh, conduction band. And if you have uh, this kind of uh, level uh, uh, states which cross, you can understand that they are robust because you know you can deform a little bit the Hamiltonian that will move the the the, the, the will move the the, the, the the position of this of the, will deform a bit. But the fact that there are uh, uh, bands connecting is is not uh, is not is it remains okay. And then, okay, how would you explain uh, this in terms of uh, continuum theory and co continuum field theory? Well, you have to take a, a, you have to take a low energy description. Then you have to say, I have approximate the translation invariance. Then you go to the boundary. There is a way to characterize uh, the boundary uh, of a system uh, in terms of uh, a fermion, which is localized uh, in a point where the mass uh, make a jump. So, for example, this zeta is a way to understand something about the boundary fermion. In this case, is to imagine that uh, you have also a massive fermion in the bulk, and then the mass has uh, this kind of uh, kink profile at the boundary. And when you have this kink profile, then there is a massless state which is local localized at the boundary. So, zeta equal to zero is the boundary of the system. Okay, this is a way to picture this uh, existence of these uh, massless states. So now we proceed as before, and we, I am late. Okay, so we proceed by guessing the uh, effective theory. So the, th the effective theory is again a topological theory, and uh, uh, with some insight, we come up with this expression in which this is so-called uh, BF theory, which is generally generalization of uh, chain simon theory. You have a one-form gauge field and a two-form gauge field called B, okay? Okay, so then uh, these two fields correspond to uh, matter degrees of freedom, which are dual to currents in the bulk. So, so there is, there will be a current for uh, particle excitations like this, dual of B field, and the dual OA field is in fact a two index current. And so this is a kind of vortex current. So this theory will have uh, anionic excitations which are made by point particle and vortex lines. But this is, this is, this is uh, let's go, let's try to discuss the boundary otherwise it takes too much time. Then there is a coupling to the standard magnetic field again of the form of the current matter current dual of B times the standard field A. Then there is a theta term. 
theta therma, which is possible in four dimension. However, since we are uh, uh, requiring time reversal, the possible value of theta are just either zero or pi, because this, this term is not a time reversal invariant. When you do a time reversal transformation, it changes sign. So it, it's, it is okay only for pi, value of pi, because, because of periodicity, pi is equal to, is equivalent to minus pi. So the, so the way to understand that this uh, Z2 index for this state, for this state is the fact that theta can only take either zero, which is a trivial theory, or pi, which is not topological theory, and no other values, which are consistent with time reversal. Sorry, I have again a problem, okay? Yes. Maybe I'm sorry to interrupt you. The normal, normally in QCD, the quantis, the theta being periodic with period two pi comes, because what replaces this is F by F, the two form integrated. And when you integrate it, you get the, um, the churn number or the a certain bundle over this over the compact divide S4. Okay. Yes. In the abelian case, there is no such bundle. So the integration of this will give zero. Hey, no, 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 I, no, no, why? Of, no, no. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry. Depends on the manifold. Okay. Not, if, so on an R4, let us take R4 and you put standard boundary conditions for the fields, let us say. Uh, becoming a pure gauge at infinity. In that case, the DA with DA integrated will give zero. No, there is no, 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 I have a boundary here. I have, I have a, a chunk of uh, S3. R4, no. R3, 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 okay, I have a boundary. Yes, and, so, uh, sorry, sorry, let me finish. If you take the boundary as S3, there is no non trivial U1 bundle on S3. So, I know, you, I know. Hmm. I know. So, so, why is this integer? I don't understand integration of this in the action, why is it integer? Well, that would take uh, extra time for my seminar, the explanation. But uh, in, in, uh, so the point is that uh, if you have a compact uh, manifold M, it is either zero or non-zero depending on the topology. For example, on S4 is zero, but on S2 cross S2 is non-zero because basically you get the the, the square of the first chain plus, okay? Yes. Okay, because so in that case, it's not zero. And it is periodic, and so the possibility is either pi or zero, okay? Yes. But what is concerned more for me is the case with the boundary, because I want to have a, a, a I want to have an ordinary space, a chunk of, of matter in ordinary space, but they have a boundary. And so this term is necessary to cancel the uh, parity anomaly of the fermion on the boundary. So, so when you go to the boundary, this term goes to the boundary, it exactly cancels the parity anomaly of the fermion in, in two plus one dimension, which is in fact a one over eight pi. So if you re replace, you get, uh, if you go to the bound, this is, a this is a total derivative on the boundary is the ordinary Chen Simon with coefficient one over eight pi which is the anomaly of the failure. So this term is necessary to cancel the anomaly of the, 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 the surface degrees of freedom. And the mechanism by which uh, the anomaly cancel between boundary and, uh, and bulk is the same as before, only the fact that this anomaly is discrete, not continuous, okay? So that explanation. So let me continue. Uh, uh, you you I, don't feel under I, pressure. We we are not uh, we are not rushed. Okay, okay, okay. Very good. Not, okay, lots of questions. Good. We encourage questions, so please don't feel pressure. No, no, I don't. Okay, okay. So 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 then uh, we proceed as before. We say okay. This so this theta term is necessary for anomaly cancellation. That's what I said. This but is it is it is gauge invariant. These other terms are not the gauge invariant. So this term is not gauge invariant if I have a boundary. So again, I have to put a boundary term. This boundary term will be specializing, will be obtained by specializing the, 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 these degrees of freedom on the boundary. So on the boundary, a two form does not really exist. It has to be replaced by the derivative of a one form, okay? 
instead the the a field the a form one form exists on the boundary so you come up with this additional piece at the surface which is again a a, a symplectic term so it is it is it is of a kind uh, a um, pq dot okay because of course it's topological okay so so that 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 is uh, what you want to get uh, in the static case what you want to get to cancel the uh, to obtain a gauge invariance between these two uh, terms the the topological term in the bulk and the surface term okay so it is now this point the gauge invariant is okay at this point uh, we have to add the uh, the dynamics to to this uh, to this uh, degrees of freedom so the topological theory suggests you some bosonic degrees of freedom at the boundary which are two gauge fields in this case two two gauge field two matter gauge field which are zeta and a and then you have to invent some dynamics for it okay and in particular these dynamics should be masses and if possible also conform an invariant because you know that uh, the fermion i mean the the simplest case this is going to be a massless fermion which is both uh, conformal invariant massless and conformal invariant so at this point after some uh, uh, work of people then it turns out that the right term to put is this kind of uh, non-local uh, 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 abelian gauge theory so so why is that because uh, if if you have a, a, the usual f mu nu square in three dimension in two plus one dimension, this has a dimension full coupling. Okay, G would have a dimension of of uh, one of a mass, and so it cannot be scale invariant. It cannot be conformal invariant. Okay, and also because if you integrate out now the A field and the uh, big uh, you integrate out both the little a field and the zeta field then you get uh, uh, a similar expression uh, you see you integrate about you integrate zeta you get uh, a is proportional to big a capital a is proportional to small a and then you basically you get this expression but in terms of uh, uh, field strengths of the external field this is what you would get if you do if you uh, compute the one loop effective action of the failure so this type of uh, interaction this type of effective action produce an induced action which fits with the fermionic theory at the semi classical level so to to to, to lead in order in h bar okay so uh, you you say okay i don't expect exact bosonization in in two plus one dimension because that would be too much so let's start let's start with a semi-classical approach and it seems that this type of dynamics is okay with the fermion so as as a special case of the parameters involved in this action i get uh, the expected result for fermions in the semi-classical limit so again what i'm going to argue now is that uh, for k equal to one at a certain choice of this coupling constant g, I will get the fermion. And for k different from, from, from bigger than one and different values of g, I will get interacting fermions and also anions. This anion will be massless because it's a massless theory. Okay? Any question? Presumably you, can, presumably, you can get this term by adding a, um, a, some additional scalar field, for instance, where you, when you, integrate, which you, when you integrate out, you get this, this uh, Green's function between them. Yes that's, that's, that, yes, that's what I'm going to do. In fact, okay. I, I, I'm doing a trick like this. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. You say, OK. Uh, you, I, I have introduced a non-local term, but this is uh, in general not the correct uh, correct thing. If you have any, a non-local term, it means that you have integrated out some uh, massless degrees of freedom. Okay, 
Yeah, exactly, yes, exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, and this is true. And in fact, we are going to see this. Okay. Okay. So, but let me first discuss some properties of this uh, non local abelian theory, which are uh, interesting for several reasons. Uh, okay. So, first of all, notice that uh, this uh, uh, 1 over x square uh, kernel is, in fact, uh, uh, in momentum space is, is given by this. Uh, by this uh, uh, square root of the Laplacian in two plus one dimension. Okay, so uh, another way to, to, to write the previous action is the following. Okay, the, so the numerator num numerator makes uh, the the field strands out of the little a field, and the denominator makes the one over uh, x square kernel. And notice this uh, magic property that when you integrate out. With respect to this uh, form of the current, you will get the inverse of this uh, quadratic piece, okay, as usual. But the inverse of this piece is again the same piece. So this is kind of magic, okay? You see? So you would say, okay, here I have a quadratic operator. When I integrate out the, the source, I get the inverse. Uh, yes, but if the source is given in terms of dA, d zeta, then this is reproduced, okay? So this is the technical trick that tells me that the theory is self-dual. So basically, if I couple uh, to an additional field, some sort of uh, uh, statistical field, is again a gauge field, which couple to the external field with this uh, dual uh, relation, then the action goes to itself with G replaces by one over G. This is a so-called particle vortex duality in, one, in two plus one dimension. So uh, there are several instances of uh, particle vortex duality in two plus one dimension and also fermion boson dualities in two plus one dimensions. Some are very old and some are new results and they fit in, in, in a set of relation which is called the duality web, okay? many, many relations. And uh, these, in these relations in general are uh, guesses. In this case, you can compute because the quadratic theory, you compute it and you check explicitly that uh, this theory is particle vortex uh, self-dual, okay? Okay? Of course, you say, okay, but this theory looks uh, kind of strange. There is no, there is no ordinary uh, kinetic term. It's uh, strange. Okay, so either it comes from uh, integrating out some extra degrees of freedom. Okay, and in fact, it's true. For example, you can uh, define a sort of uh, uh, QED uh, in uh, where the uh, fermions are in two plus one dimensions, but the, uh, the photon is in three plus one dimension. This is called mixed uh, dimensional QD introduced by Son and collaborator. And uh, you can show that uh, this theory is self-dual like this. And uh, for large number of fermions, again, you can do a semi classic approximation and you get this uh, non-local non uh, abelian theory. Okay, so uh, this theory I'm discussing is also the large NF limit of uh, QED with uh, mixed dimensionality. That is uh, fermions in two plus one and photon in three plus one dimension. Okay, so, so that's uh, another property. Another property is that this theory uh, is non-trivial. It is quadratic theory, but it's non-trivial because it, it has some solitonic uh, solutions. And uh, the solitary solutions are the magnetic monopoles for the A field and the zeta field. So because they are dual, one are sort of magnetic monopoles, the other are electric monopoles. Why they should be there? Well, and why they should have this quantization? Well, this is coming from consistency with the anionic excitation in the bulk. So there is, a, as before, there is this mechanism that uh, uh, excitation in the bulk have some non-trivial, uh, in general, have non-trivial uh, uh, anionic phases. 
when they go to the boundary, they correspond to solitary uh, excitation of the theory on the boundary, which should have a certain uh, phases among themselves. And this is related to the quantization condition I have to impose on the A field and the zeta field. Okay? So to explain this, it will require some time, but uh, it is okay. Okay? So, so we are going to discuss this uh, non-local abelian theory, which has uh, electric and magnetic monopoles. Another reason why it has electric magnetic monopoles is because it's self-dual. So if it has electric monopoles, it should have also magnetic monopoles, okay? Another property is that uh, there is a critical line. So where, where, the, where neither monopole condense. So this is, this is different from, from, from ordinary Yamils uh, in uh, uh, two plus one dimension that uh, from the work of Polyakov is known that uh, it's always massive. Uh, compact Yamils theory in two plus one dimension is massive because the monopole condense for any value of the coupling. And so they make a, a, a disorder and massive phase. In this case, it's not true. It depends because, because this uh, non-local uh, kernel produces a different uh, uh, energy. And so in this case, there is a critical line uh, similar to the, to the bosonic theory in one dimension below, where this uh, monopole, both monopoles do not condense and therefore the theory is massless. So it's a uh, so-called Coulomb phase, okay? So these are interesting properties because uh, this theory is a kind of uh, uh, toy model for many aspects that have been discussed in recent years in two plus one dimensional uh, uh, T field theory, okay? Now let's discuss how to uh, quantize and find the spectrum of this theory, okay? And uh, the idea, as we said before, is to consider this theory as a theory uh, where you integrate it out, uh, uh, embedded, uh, represent this theory in a larger theory in which some degrees of freedom have not been integrated out. And this is, uh, uh, it is the following theory. You have to embed in a theory which is in three plus one dimension, in which you have an ordinary uh, yam mills term. So this big A is uh, the, three-dimensional extension of, uh, of uh, the, the, the earlier A. So you introduce an extra coordinate zeta, orthogonal, and then uh, this is an extension for zeta different from zero, zero of this A. When you integrate out this local term, it's going to produce uh, the one, of, one over P square uh, propagator in three plus one dimension. When then uh, in coordinate space is going to be x squared plus z squared, and when you specialize to the surface zeta equal to zero, it reproduces the one over x squared. So what was be what was before the uh, propagator of square root of Laplace now in one extra dimension is the, is the propagator of Laplace, and so you get the back of the theory. Okay, the theory of before. At this point, the theory extended in one dimension is a lo perfectly local theory. It's just uh, ordinary yam mills in uh, abelian uh, yam mills in three plus one with a, with, with a very specific kind of uh, surface term uh, at zeta equal to zero. So at this point, I can compute the partition function by the usual canonical quantization. So I solve the equation of motion and I impose a boundary condition on the equation of motion such that I have a solid, solid on solution that I was, I was uh, asked, I, was, I have to put. So I have to put uh, a classical solution that contains uh, magnetic and electric uh, monopoles. Then I have oscillating states. I can split the path integral as usual in a semi-classical part for the solitary modes and, uh, and fluctuation, but that fluctuation around it. Okay, and so I can compute the partition function. So, so that's what I did. I did, okay, and that's the result. So before uh, coming to this, we, have, we need uh, an extra input information. 
there is, there is a special uh, geometry to do this calculation, which is uh, uh, interesting for conformal field theory. Because uh, there is a, if you take uh, uh, the space, R3 space like this, and you analyze it in terms of uh, uh, polar coordinates, okay? Uh, and, uh, and, uh, and then you map the radius prime, uh, with this conformal map, okay? You go to uh, a sort of cylinder, sort of cylinder of this kind with this U variable. And this is useful because uh, the uh, time evolution, Euclidean time evolution in this cylinder actually correspond to dilatation in the original uh, flat space, okay? So if I, if I write down uh, the uh, partition function for this geometry, I discover that uh, the energy, solitonic energies I compute semi-classically, they are in fact the scaling dimension of the, of the conformal theory. Okay, so there is the, due to this map, there is that the energies on this geometry as in, are proportional to the scale dimension of fields. So this geometry is very convenient to uh, compute the dimension of the fields to see, to see which kind of fields, uh, uh, conformal fields I have in the theory, okay? And after some calculation, you come up with this result, which is here. So there is, this is the sum over, uh, over the solitonic states. So one is counting the electric charge and the other is counting the magnetic charge. Okay, and this this product here is a sort of boson uh, Boltzmann. Uh, this uh, I mean not, not Boltzmann, but uh, uh, Bose distribution. This is coming from is the ordinary term coming from uh, uh, the uh, oscillating part of the field. Okay, okay. So now we uh, I will discuss this uh, property of this formula, and uh, and we are we have finished. Okay, so. What are the properties of this formula? First of all, it is manifestly self-dual because you see, uh, the, uh, the theory is self-dual. So the partition function goes to itself and also the spectrum should go to itself. So if I have a set of fields, set of conformal fields, they have to form uh, electric magnetic uh, multiplets, they exchange among themselves, okay? because then all quantity will have this uh, self-duality that I built out of fields will have this self-duality. And so in fact, this is true because when I exchange G with one over G, I exchange the two index electric and magnetic. Sorry, and beta is a period, so you've, you've beta is temperature or something, is it? You've yes. moved to S1 cross S2. Yes. So, okay. so then this, uh, this R is then also compatified to make temperature, okay? So you take the trace of the trace of, uh, of the, of the E to the- no, That's fine, right. e, 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 e to the minus uh, beta H, okay? And so, and so this is also, so beta is, is the temperature or if you want the one over the length of this, uh, Time, compatified time, okay? R, R is the size of the ball, okay? And then there is a free parameter, which is the velocity, Fermi velocity, which is not determined, uh, okay? Uh, it's not universal, okay? Okay, so what is the property of thought? So I get this uh, solitary spectrum, which uh, uh, obeys self-duality. Uh, and then what I get, I get that in a special case, which is k equal to g equal to one, I should get the free fermion, okay? And so in fact, in the spectrum, there is s equal one half, while for k bigger than one, I get a dimension which are uh, uh, not free field theory uh, dimensions, and these are property of anions, okay? So the property of anions should map uh, the pro the Arnold bond phases that I have in the bulk. So that, that should match, okay? And also there are some, uh, some uh, check that the theory is conformal invariant, not only scale invariant. One check is that uh, there is no Casimir effect, which would be a little displacement in the energy here, a, a final term in the energy here is not present. That, that is consistent with the fact that we don't have conformal anomaly 
in two plus one dimension. And another indication is that uh, this, uh, the dimension of the sentence, which are, uh, which are obtained here by expanding in powers of, uh, of B, B, B over R here, they are integer spaced. And they should be integer spaced because the sentence fields uh, in conformal field theory are derivative fields. So uh, the, the fields in the theory should have uh, some starting value which is a solitonic uh, origin, and then derivative of this field are part of the spectrum of, of conformal theory. Derivative should differ by an integer. So if this spacing here is not integer, then the theory is not conformal value. So these two checks uh, indicates that uh, the way I quantize the theory by all the tricks I did so far, are uh, consistent with conformal invariance, not only scale invariance. And this is not completely trivial because the theory I start with was non-local and uh, actually requires uh, infrared cutoff. And then uh, I have to de deal with the infrared cutoff. All the technicalities that uh, eventually seems to produce a, a reasonable result, OK? Because if it is not conformal, then it cannot be, it cannot have the free fermion as a special case. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm, so, okay. I'm so, somewhat please. confused by because the two manifold S1 cross S2 is not conformal to. Um, I'm not, it's not conformal to the plane. And I'm not sure what the meaning of beta in going from one formula. To the other is so. So the map the map is with uh, with with R crosses two. Okay. Yes, the map is fine with R crosses two. Then, but now you've introduced beta. Beta makes sense. Beta, I, I do because R I R crosses I, two case, but it doesn't compute, for the other case. I compute the trace of the operator, so the periodicity is made by the trace operator trace operation. So this map will give me me a, an Hamiltonian, okay. So I have e to the minus beta Hamiltonian. And then to make a compatification on the additional uh, direction, I take the trace. OK? So that gives me, comp I compatify not the space, but uh, the quantity I'm, com I'm computing because I take the trace. OK? okay. Do you agree? Do, do, do you want me to show the black um, one? No, no, I, I, I see what you're saying, but I'm just, the geometry is not fitting quite for me. I'm not quite sure. You're, you have a radial quantization in the R3 case. Yeah. And you are taking trace of- No, 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 no. I, I don't do quantization in an R3. I do quantization in this space. Okay. okay. Yes, but yes. But so why don't you do a quantization in R3? Uh, because because be the same evolution in time form. would be so-called a radial. Radial evolution would be. So sometimes okay, that's fine. So okay, but if you're not doing that, then I'm fine. I'm happy with it. That's fine. So this sometimes is called a radial quantization, huh? because what what is radial quantization? Is ordinary quantization on the cylinder? Okay, because because no, no, I'm happy. That's fine. I also did the, I also did the quantization on a standard periodic boundary condition like a torus. But the, the result for the energies of uh, solitonic state is not really meaningful. It's not, it's not extremely interesting. Here, instead, they give me access to the dimension of, of conformal fields. And so that, that, that is important because it enters in many, in, in all the quantities of the theory, OK? OK, so conclusion, uh, conclusion is that uh, topological states are uh, very important, uh, very much investigated because uh, they are uh, property, they, their property is, is given by gauge theories, topological gauge theories, so gauge theories so is kind of important. And, and also practical, practical application. For example, these uh, uh, massless excitation at the boundary, they are, they, kind of, they are kind of half of what you would get in an ordinary system. Either they are chiral or, for example, in two plus one dimension, normally you have a pair of fermions. Here instead you have just one fermion. And so 
they can, they, 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 this uh, edge excitation or boundary excitation do not interact. In particular, they conduct without uh, dissipation. So in principle, you can make a perfect uh, uh, conductor with this material. So it's very important. And uh, so what I was insisting in this seminar is the possibility to bosonize fermions in any dimension. So in one plus one dimension, it is where it is fully understood. Uh, there is a critical line. And uh, in this critical line, there is a point where the fermion is free and other points in which a fermion is interacting. In two plus one dimension, I have introduced this uh, non-local abelian theory, which has some similarity with the ordinary bosonic theory in one plus one dimension, because there is a critical line, there is a self-duality, and also conformal invariance. So what are the pers perspectives? Well, there are many perspectives, many how. Uh, for example, uh, what I've studied so far is the partition function, which is the first, the first piece of the theory. What I would like to understand is uh, uh, the, the form of these uh, fields, the fields of the theory, with, which are non-trivial, like uh, anionic fields. They are sort of vertex operators of a conformal theory, but uh, in one extra dimension, and this is not completely clear. The, the problem of bosonization in two plus one dimension is a very old problem and many fail att failed attempt in the past, starting from uh, many people, so I don't remember anyhow. So, so it, it looks like uh, that uh, this in this setting, somehow you are guaranteed, guaranteed that uh, bosonization should take place. And so somehow there is a guide to, to what to do, okay? Even in three plus one dimension, maybe it's possible. I mean, one has to repeat the same, uh, the same tricks with the topological theories and the symmetries that can occur in a, in a bulk that at this point is five dimensional. But there are attempts in this direction, not, not clear so far, but anyhow, maybe it can be done, okay? Of course, this theory is semi-classical and uh, is not uh, the entire story. One, for example, can consider a, a correction, one over f correction, one, one over n correction that uh, makes the theory fully quantum, okay? And also, I didn't discuss uh, what could be the topological, uh, the topological gauge theory that describe the other uh, the, these other cases which uh, fill these uh, 10, uh, 10 dimensional classes. I just discussed two classes. And uh, what are the effective theories for the other classes? Uh, it's not completely clear. And uh, in particular, it's not completely clear to me. And uh, the issue here is uh, the fact that uh, to understand uh, global anomalies, and, uh, and this is uh, being discussed uh, in the literature. Okay, the, that's all. If you want, if you okay. want, if you want, I also put some readings. If you want to copy, if you want to copy the the, the file, uh, some people, people can find them. People reference. You you can send me the uh, the uh, sure. slides when you're finished. Sure. Yes, I will put them on our webpage. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Let's. Uh, we are kind of silent hankers. Thank you. Uh, the Thank floor you. is open to questions. I, it took it took a lot more time. Huh? I'm very sorry. But that's okay. That we this is normal for us. Yeah. Okay. It's recorded, so anyone that needs to leave can catch up afterwards. So I have a question, maybe also a small comment uh, yes. before. Um, so very nice talk. Um, maybe just uh, one thing to remark is that this uh, what you mentioned about this um, uh, mixed dimensional QED was already studied uh, in the past before the Sun paper by people in Brazil and Utrecht. Uh, to study graphene and topological insulator without shared Simon theory. Because they, for instance, they showed that uh, it's also unitary, this ah. local theory, that I think it's important. So it's not only conformal, but also unitary. And, you know, uh, I was in, in the group in Utrecht when, uh, you know, <laughs> we did some work on that. Um, so, and then my question, more important question is, do you think that, that there is any possible non-abelian generalization of what you have presented because for instance, uh, you know, when I have in mind the electromagnetic duality, uh, I think about the ions that are very similar to uh, anions, let's say in three plus one dimension. And that we know that the, the electromagnetic duality can be embedded this uh, non-abelian theory. 
uh, from high energy physics. So I was wondering uh, if you have any clue that, you know, this, uh, if it's possible to build uh, something non a billion, non local and non a billion theory, like uh, what you presented with, with the similar features like uh, conformal invariance and, uh, you know, unitarity or. Uh, okay, this is a, uh, yes, yes, the, 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 the this mixed dimensional uh, uh, Q, QED is, uh, is not uh, due to SON, uh, it, it existed before. The result of SON is the fact that it showed that uh, it's exactly self dual. Yeah, so, yeah, but exactly. that was the result. Because they have the church simon theory on the yes, top. Yes, and uh, so that uh, that's uh, so non -ab yeah, I mean, it is a very interesting question because we know that this uh, web of dualities extends to uh, non abelian uh, gauge, gauge, gauge fields. Yeah. And uh, so the, the nice thing of this, uh, this theory I presented is that you can do computation and verify all this duality, I mean, uh, straightforward. So you, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, in fact, uh, it is not the original theory, but is a kind of uh, large N uh, limit of the original theory, okay? So, uh, presumably, if I can do some large N uh, expansion also on abelian fields, I might discover that there is some sort, some analogous theory in which I can do calculations. Yeah, exactly. Because if you take... Uh, the, point, the point is that uh, large N limit... Uh, <sighs> So, I mean, uh, with non abelian gauge, uh, certainly you should not do large number of color. Large number of color, the large yeah, limit is, is not trivial. No, no, I agree. Uh, but the large number of fermions, I think you can do. And, uh, and then the, 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 the things simplify a lot. And so, and so probably, yes, I could do this uh, analysis for, uh, so let, for example, let's take, uh, one of the non abelian duality that uh, belong to this uh, duality web uh, that uh, has been discussed, for example, in this uh, review, very nice review by Turner. Okay. Yes. Uh, let's take a, a case of this and take a lar large number of fermions. And uh, maybe, yes. The point is that sometimes duality does not commute with large NF. Huh? So sometimes. Uh, duality mix uh, number of color and number of fermions. And so sometimes uh, when you do large NF, uh, you spoil the duality or you change the duality. And, uh, but no, no, nonetheless, it's interesting, yes, because uh, it's not a big. Okay, thank you. Could be interesting, yes. Other questions? Um, we've had lots of questions and discussion during the, uh, the seminar, so I will uh, uh, stop the recording and leave it to a less formal discussion. Okay, thanks again, Andrea.